Welcome to Microsoft Access Expert Level 10, brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's class focuses on three main topics. First, we'll set up our invoices so they can also be quotations. We'll also put paid or unpaid on the top of each invoice. And we'll do some more work with those system default values that we started working with in the last class. Next, we'll learn about one of the more powerful functions in Access called DLOOKUP. This function allows you to look up a value from a table or query. For example, in the image here, you can see I can select a sales rep for an order, and the DLOOKUP function will automatically display that sales rep's phone number. And finally, we'll take a look at calculated table fields as opposed to calculated query fields. Calculated table fields allow you to put calculations directly into your tables instead of putting them in queries. There are some pros and cons, but we'll discuss them in today's class. The prerequisite for this class is Access Expert Level 9. The printable invoice that we built in Level 9 will be used in today's class. So if you haven't taken Level 9, I strongly recommend you take it before taking today's class. Today's class was designed to be used with Access 2013. If you're using Access 2010, this lesson will also be fine for you. Most of the material in today's class will work just fine with Access 2007 as well, except the lesson on calculated table fields. It's a very short lesson, and I really don't recommend using calculated table fields at all for most purposes, so you're really not missing much. But the last lesson, Lesson 4, on calculated table fields is not valid for Access 2007 because that feature was added in 2010. The bottom line is don't worry. If you're using Access 2007, you're not missing anything. If you're using Access 2003 or earlier, you should be able to follow along with Lessons 1 through 3, the quota invoice, the DLOOKUP functions. There's no exact match for this class because I didn't used to cover these topics until my advanced lessons, and the material in today's class comes from three or four different lessons from the Access 2003 series. As I've revised the course, I've decided to move some things around, change the order in which some things are displayed. So this class is a combination of a few different lessons from my Access 2003 series. My courses are broken up into four groups, Beginner, Expert, Advanced, and Developer. The Beginner lessons are designed to give you a basic overview of the simple features of Access. The Expert series, the one you're in now, is designed for more experienced users who are already comfortable with Access. The advanced lessons cover working with macros, automation, and many more advanced features. And the developer lessons get into programming with Visual Basic for Microsoft Access. Each of the series are broken down into different numbered levels, starting with level 1. The beginner series, for example, had levels 1 through 9. In addition to my normal Access classes, I also have seminars designed to teach specific topics. Some of my seminars include building web-based databases, creating forms and reports that look like calendars, securing your database, working with images and attachments, writing work orders, tracking accounts payable, learning the SQL programming language, and lots more. You can find complete details on all these seminars and more on my website at accesslearningzone.com. If you have questions about the topics covered in today's lessons, please feel free to post them in my student forums. If you're watching this course using my custom video player software or the online theater on my website, you should see the student forum for each lesson appear in a small window next to the class videos, as long as you have an active internet connection. Here, you will see all of the questions that other students have asked, as well as my responses to them and comments that other students may have made. I encourage you to read through these questions and answers as you start each lesson, and feel free to post your own questions and comments as well. If you're not watching the lessons online, you can still visit the student forums later by visiting accesslearningzone.com forums. To get the most out of this course, I recommend that you sit back, relax, and watch each lesson completely through once without trying to do anything on your computer. Then, Replay the lesson from the beginning and follow along with my examples. Actually create the same database that I make in the video step by step. Don't try to apply what you're learning right now to other projects 
until you've mastered the sample database from this class. If you get stuck or don't understand something, watch the video again from the beginning or tell me what's wrong in the student forum. Most importantly, keep an open mind. Access might seem intimidating at first, but once you get the hang of it, you'll see that it's real easy to use. Now let's take a closer look at exactly what's covered in today's class. In the last class, Access Expert 9, we developed a printable invoice that we could generate off of our order form. In today's class, we're going to add the ability to switch between an invoice and a quotation. And if it's an invoice, mark whether it's paid or unpaid and display that information right on top of the quota invoice. In addition, we're going to take the company name, our company name, PCResale.net, and we're going to add that information to the system default table. In lesson two, we're going to move the system default values off the main menu onto its own form. And then we're going to learn about one of the most powerful functions in Access called DLOOKUP, where you can look up a value directly out of a table without having to have the form open. In lesson three, we're going to spend some more time working with the DLOOKUP function. We're going to add a sales rep field to our customers and our orders. And by picking the sales rep, I'm going to use DLOOKUP to display that sales rep's phone number on the order form and on the invoice. In lesson four, we're going to discuss calculated table fields, how they're different from calculated query fields, what the problems with them are, why you generally shouldn't use them, and the exception when it's okay to use them.